How's it going? My name is Nathan, this is Roman Masters. I hope you're having a great day today. So I got to guide too. Yes, this is a bag of system. Forget those old bag styles. You need to shot guide too. Okay, watch the pro here. So I get the Presidic M7 Pro and it has the smart light on navigation. Plus, having a bag system is real easy. Let me show you something. Okay, my absolute favorite thing I like about the Strike IQ is Alexa support. Not only can you start and stop the robot, you can also tell it to go to a certain area. Alright, let's go ahead and get my good friend. Hey Alexa, tell Shark IQ to clean the living room. Okay, your robot is heading to clean the living room. This Shark IQ is one of the few who have vacuums and cleaning the Roombas that have the ability to use Alexa to clean a certain room by a voice. While other robot vacuums including the Proscenic M7 Pro do have Alexa support and Google support, it's only basic start and stop commands. I definitely won't recommend listening to the guy in red because he's kind of a clown, he likes to party too much and he really doesn't know what he's talking about. Silly shark. Alexa support, that's all old news. Guess what the Proscenic M7 Pro has? Has a handheld remote, you can use it as a remote control. Also has smartphone support for both Android and iPhone. The Proscenic M7 Pro with its advanced LiDAR navigation can navigate to the living room with a bunch of obstacles. Watch this. I would give credit to the guy in grey that he's been doing really well putting up with all the bugs and quirks with the Shark IQ. If I had to do that, I'd probably pull out all my hair. Anyways, the Proscenic M7 Pro app works well on the iPhone, I've been using the iPhone 8 Plus. Also, I have a Note 9, which works well. One thing to note is the Proscenic M7 does have some misspellings, probably because he was the cause of it. Hey Nathan Red, the Shark IQ is a better cleaner. I kind of like on the M7 Pro. If you're looking for a good scatter bot, well, the M7 Pro is the robot for you. I don't know why you're rooting for the M7 Pro, Nathan Red. I think your dual side breast system is spinning too fast, which is causing more harm than good. Maybe Chris Scenic should use the daycare wall center to slow down the side brushes in open areas like the Roborock. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about, Nathan. You need the Pacific M7 Pro's dual side brush system because when they spin a million miles per hour, they do well grabbing the dirt debris from the carpet, also from the baseboards. Yes, have fast spinning side brushes, not those slow single arm ones on the Shark IQ. The guy in red says that the Shark IQ is too loud for him. Well, it runs around 70 decibels and the reason behind this is this is one of the most powerful robot vacuums around 23 CFM. Also, the Shark IQ is great for pet owners because the anti-tangle brush actually helps reduce hair around the bristles, which is something that I can't say for the combo style brush, which is on the Proscenic M7 Pro. Again, Nathan, you don't know what you're talking about. All you have to do is just flip around, take out the extractor bar, simple little pinch. See this extractor bar? Yes, it's a combo style, but you got this clean tool that the Proscenic M7 Pro includes. Quick wipe. Done. Simple. It's okay Nathan, don't get your panties in the water, just admit that the Shark IQ self-cleaning brush is better than on the combo style brush which is on a Proscenic M7 Pro. So, tell me Nathan, on your Proscenic M7 Pro, how well does the self-emptying bin work? Does it actually empty out contents from the robot vacuum? I don't want to brag or anything, but on my Shark IQ with its backless system and its super powerful vacuum motor, it does a great job cleaning out the dustbin on the robot vacuum. I'm giving you guys a fair warning now, cover up your ears because this awesome self-emptying bin is quite loud. Hey Nathan, in red, I got another question for you. So why does your Presenic M7 Pro have to rotate 180 degrees just to empty itself? Don't you think it could do both functions in one direction? Well Nathan, in grey or black, hmm, why do you change your shirt so much? Hmm, you seem very off. Anyways, with an advanced machine like the Proscenic M7 Pro, there's redundancy. 
So if for some reason the charging contacts in the front fail, it still has the ability to empty itself. And vice versa, if the charging contacts in the back fail, it still has the ability to recharge. Simple, simple mathematics. You also have to have redundancy in an advanced machine like this. Hmm. I can't explain simplicity to idiots. Ah, uh, Nathan. Well, Nathan, oh my gosh, your logic is so messed up. It's like basically saying 1 plus 1 is 3, not 2. Okay, let me explain the definition of redundancy. So if a system has a redundant system, that means if one of the modules fails, it can still perform the same function, the same function, not a different function. It's okay, Nathan and Red, don't stress yourself. Not everyone can be a robot master's expert. I give credit for Prusenic for trying. I think they could revise their self-emptying bin, maybe provide a stronger motor or a better sealing system so it can pull out all the dirt and debris. I did see on Amazon's listing they actually pulled the self-emptying bin, so hopefully there's a new revision coming out and we'll see down the road if Prusenic can improve the design of the self-emptying bin. Oh, Nathan, 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 I keep explaining this over and over to you. Even though the self-emptying bin on the Pacific M7 Pro can't get all the debris in the first go-around, as real-life testing, your real-world testing, I've been running this for a few months and it's able to get the dirt and debris, keep it down, and that's the whole point of a self-emptying bin, is so you don't have to do daily maintenance of emptying out the bin, it will over time keep the bin down. Now, if you don't understand that concept, I don't know how to better explain that to you. <sighs> Nathan in gray or black? You're so confused. Uh, please find some help. I think you really need some help. Well, Nathan and Red, if I need help, well, your Prusenic M7 Pro definitely needs some help. Look at this. I have some basic plastic beads in here, and it still is in a dustbin. How in the world is it able to keep the dustbin down if it can't get get some plastic beads out of the dustbin? Dustbin has been installed. Well, are you skeptical out there? Check it out, look at that. I'm eating out the bag and there's a bunch of dirt and debris for just from my few weeks of testing the Prusenic M7 Pro. So this Prusenic M7 Pro does work. The self emptying bin is able to capture all uh, the dirt and debris away from the dustbin. Okay, okay. We need to stop arguing, Nathan. Let's become best buddies. Alright, so here's a couple things that we do agree upon. Thing to notice though, Shark IQ does not have a dirt detection sensor. So if there's excessive amounts of dirt, the robot will not detect it and spend additional time on it. If the bin's full, the robot will not detect that and keep on cleaning. So that's one thing to know. So I did do a uh, Shark IQ teardown video also with the self-emptying bin. And I did look for those sensors, the dirt bin sensor or a dirt full sensor. And I did not see any of those on the robot vacuum. The Prusenic M7 Pro is the same way, but one thing to note is the Roombas have a dirt detection sensor. Also, they have a dirt full sensor so they can return back to their charger when a dustbin's full. So let's have a look at both robots, the Shark IQ and M7, navigating his chair leg. Keep in mind that the Shark IQ's diameter is slightly smaller than the M7, so it's able to fit between the chair leg. Both the dual side brush systems do well capturing the skittles and bring it towards the center of the robot vacuum, so I'm a big fan of the dual side brush system on both models. If I had to just to pick one, I think the Prusenic M7 Pro does slightly better with navigating around furniture, especially like tight obstacles since the LiDAR sensor is able to detect those and kind of navigate around those in real time. Whereas the Shark IQ, since it's using a camera-based system, has to rely more on its bumper sensor. There's pros and cons to both navigation systems. For camera-based systems, since there's no moving parts, they tend to last longer. But for LiDAR sensors, they can create a map within one cleaning session. For the Shark IQ, depending on how complex your floor plan, takes anywhere from 4 to up to 30 cleaning runs. In my case, I had about 30 or so cleaning runs. I had to reset the robot, then I was able to get down to about 12. But that's just one thing to remember about the Shark IQ. Okay, let's have a look at the three top in robot vacuums that have self-emptying bin. These self-emptying bins work the best, the Roomba series and also the Shark IQ. You can see that the i7 Plus picked up a lot of the plastic beads and also the Shark IQ self-emptying bin does just as well. The Prusenic M7 Pro, despite not having the best self-emptying bin, still works really well as a smart LiDAR navigating robot. You can see that it effortlessly navigates around these obstacles without getting stuck or getting confused. It's probably on par with the Roborock, so I give it an A plus for navigation on the Prusenic M7 Pro. So in my opinion, if you are looking for something that does have a self-emptying bin option and it's LiDAR based, 
the Prisonic M7 Pro is probably like the only option so far. I believe the R98 was the first well, a vacuum to incorporate both the technologies, but unfortunately the D-Bot R98 is no longer available and the Prisonic M7 Pro is the only one that's commercially available, but it's not a bad robot. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video, but I hope you uh, learned some things about these robot vacuums. In real honesty, I think it's best to just try out these robot vacuums in your own home and see which one works best for you. Alright, so if you guys like this video of me arguing with myself, yeah, I decided to do something a little bit more comical. So this is the Prisonic M7 Pro versus the Shark IQ. Both these products have uh, really good features, and yes, they have pros and cons, but I think you can't go wrong with either product. Just keep in mind that for the Shark IQ, you can only do a single floor plan. With the Prisonic M7 Pro, even though it supports multiple floor plans, the mapping is a little hard to understand. So you just have to play with it, and both products you have the ability to update the software. So definitely uh, wait a uh, week or a few months for software updates and hopefully these products improve. All right, so you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.